right, welcome everybody back to our Hanser Capital webcast slash podcast. Shane Carter here as we as with me with me as always, Eddie Austin, our VP of Operations, Investor Relations. How's it going, Eddie? Man, it's a great day. And uh, on today's episode, we're going to dig into something that's really cool. So not many people know that a fund is just so powerful in so many ways. And one of the ways is just having money in the bank ready to go for when opportunities come up. As we all know, opportunities come up sometimes once in a lifetime. Well, as we've been in the market here lately, we've seen a lot of opportunities for rescue capital and how we can utilize a fund for rescue capital opportunities. And it seems nowadays we are identifying some very good opportunities to bring capital to the table and bring very good risk, adjust, risk adjusted returns. So let's go over some numbers that you and I, we were talking about before we started. Yeah, absolutely, Eddie. So let, let's just set the stage on, you know, what rescue capital is. And I, you know, came up with this example. We have some real world examples, but for obvious reasons, we changed some of the numbers and, and uh, locations just to, uh, to be, you know, confidential about the opportunities we're looking at. But trust us, this is very much a real world opportunity that we're looking at uh, right now. Something similar to this, you know, the numbers may be a little different, but the premise is the same. So why rescue capital? Why now? And when, when we talk about risk adjusted returns, let's talk about how we are uh, diminishing the risk. So why is this opportunity here is that there are a lot of operators that, you know, two years ago, a year ago, 18 months ago, three years ago, um, bought assets at what seemed like really good interest rates at the time. Uh, they were value add plays. Uh, they bought sort of, you know, pretty high pricing, uh, very low cap rates, and um, the, the debt was cheap. So it sort of penciled, it made sense if you executed the business plan. Fast forward to, you know, today, and obviously over the last nine months, we've seen the most unprecedented interest rate growth, frankly, in history, uh, with how, you know, dramatically everything's gone up, coupled with the most dramatic rise in insurance costs that we've seen in decades. Uh, and so you have this perfect storm of any you know investors that are properly capitalized, got into bad bridge debt and didn't execute their business plan, meaning they didn't fundamentally increase value, raise rents, raise NOI, um, they're kind of in a tough spot. So where, where our money comes in and the, the best risk adjusted return comes in is where we can inject capital, take the deal over completely, right? So that we're running it, we're in charge of it. It's now us in charge of construction, CapEx management, property management, asset management, uh, and the deal itself. Uh, we inject this capital and we essentially can sit immediately right behind the primary debt or senior debt position. So let's, let's give a real world example. Let's take a, a 200 unit asset uh, that was purchased in you know somewhere in the southeast um, two years ago, uh, and these folks paid you know, about twenty five million, let's say, right? Not not a not a bad price. Felt like a pretty decent price at the time. Yeah. Um, and then of course they had you know had they had their capex capex budget uh, and you know maybe some you know act fees and, and whatnot. So you know let's say they're all in was was closer to you know uh, twenty eight million, right? So on that $25 million purchase, they likely got about $18 million in first position debt. Uh, let's say they, you know, they took another um, 3 million in a pref equity tranche that got them to sort of like, you know, closer to that 80% range. And then let's say they raised another 7 million in LP equity. And that's how they sort of rounded out the stack to get to that $28 million all in basis. Well, now, just a minute. Yeah. Just going off your numbers, I have the sense that we're over leveraged at this point. Yes, right. So let's take that same 200 unit asset. Let's say today, you know, let's say they, they bought it, like I said, for 25 million, right? Uh, and if you divide that by 200, you get about, they paid about 125 a door. Doesn't feel wrong, but let's say it's, a, you know, late 70s or, you know, 80s asset, right? In a, in a, not, in a not so great pocket of an otherwise major MSA. And we just viewed an asset. We walked an asset, what, two weeks or last week 
that was a 200 unit asset and essentially the same vintage and we're looking at 85k a door exactly so that's not a good story and then on top of that from your numbers it sounds like we're really creeping up on being an over leveraged not over leveraged to two years ago three years ago but in today's market and capital markets you want to be you know 65 um no more than 70 percent range on leverage yeah yeah we're we're, we're probably closer to 60 on, on much of what we're doing and so you hit the nail on the head they bought it at 125 a door and um, they didn't execute the business plan they had some some issues come up with with uh you know with folks not paying and, and um had some bad debt accumulate have some you know aged payables up there on the books you know and so now uh, if somebody were to sweep in and buy it today, they probably would have paid 85 a door, right? Or 80 a door or something like that. And that doesn't even pay off the primary debt. So they are underwater. They're upside down. And this is where the rescue capital comes in. So we come in and let's say we inject, uh, we determine that in this particular deal um, that to clear up the aged AP, um, you know, get new, get new loan extensions under new terms uh, with either this lender or another lender. Primarily, the, the lender in place is, is, the, is what we do. We negotiate with the existing lender and help them understand that, you know, they're upside down actually right now. If they wanted to go ahead and foreclose and try and sell the asset, they'd lose money. Uh, so we come in and um, we inject the capital. We inject the $3 million. We execute our business plan, which is um, complete all the unit turns, complete all the CapEx, and really drive the occupancy, uh, clean up all the aged AP so that the property can then pay its debts and, and continue to, to pay moving forward uh, and actually can start to cash flow and actually start to pay off, um, you know, some of its, its liabilities relative to the other equity positions in the stack. But here's the magic. Here's where the risk adjusted return comes in. And here's where we feel like this is one of the best opportunities in, in the markets that I've seen is and our example again i'm going to lay it out we got you know 18 million in debt 3 million in pref equity 7 million in lp equity right that's how they solved their 28 million dollar stack now we're coming in with another 3 million in equity guess what are we in front of their 7 million in lp equity yes can we get in front of their 3 million dollar in pref equity the answer in one of these circumstances is yes we're actually getting into a second position now with our fresh $3 million. And we're going to sit right behind the primary equity. And then in addition to that, we negotiate a waterfall structure that says um, after the primary debt is paid and our $3 million is paid, we have essentially a guaranteed net return to our investors on that $3 million, And that gets paid first. And then the principal on the PREF equity and their accrued PREF and to their equity multiple or whatever their, you know, IRR metric is that they need to hit the waterfall. And then it flows to the LP common and their accrued PREF and their waterfall and then to the GPs thereafter. So we are now in the safest position in the stack other than obviously the primary debt. And we're, we're positioning ourselves for... Uh, a, you know, a very risk from a risk adjusted return basis, a very guaranteed return, not guaranteed, but uh, well positioned return basis uh, for the, the least risk in the stack. Right? right. And we're in complete control of the asset. We're in complete control of the construction management, asset management, property management. We take over the asset completely and literally save the day for these GPs and their LP capital. Now, our goal, obviously, is to drive the performance in the assets over the next, you know, two years, let's say, that our that our business plan is so that not only do we, you know, pay off the primary debt, we pay off our piece and our investors return and we pay off the PREF and their return. But we want to get those LPs and all of their principal and all of their return paid off as well. That's our goal. We actually truly want to save folks and help them out. Because we know that there's a lot of LP capital out there right now that is at risk. And yeah. um, it could be extremely at risk if folks don't step in and save these assets and take them out of the hands of folks that aren't running them well and actually turn them around and get them, get them to be worth what they were originally, right? So that, that, that exactly. deal that was 85 a door you know, needs to be worth 
you know, 120, 130 uh, a door plus in the future, fast forward two, three years from now. And in, in our business plans, we can do that, right? We have real world example of that uh, that we can execute on. So that's a, that's a pretty exciting slice to be in if you can step in and do that. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, another thing that's really nice is through that, when we come in and we formulate a relationship with the, the actual debt partner and we show them, you know, the real facts of the deal, we present our business plan and they learn to trust what we're talking about. And we come in and actually save this asset because let's be honest, the actual debt lender, the, the actual debt partner right now, the person providing the main senior debt on this property, they don't want that asset back. They're not operators. No. They, they don't want to put it on their books. They would rather someone like us come in and help, you know, essentially save the opportunity so they don't have to deal with it. So in having that relationship, that's a really good spot to be in a preferred position with that lender. Yeah. So when it comes time to buy a fresh asset without any issues, they're probably going to give us a pretty good term. That's right. Exactly. And and look, you know, for, for our investors that that understand this uh, this this thesis, this investment profile, and understand that it's just one of the best risk adjusted returns that, that I've seen in my investing career in this asset class. You know, I think the important thing to note is that we are just now starting to see the tip of the iceberg of these opportunities starting to flow out. And we're, we're really excited. We're, we're engaging with uh, family office partners and other large institutional partners as well that are going to uh, want to have their capital in place for these types of events because they understand that, you know, let's say, let's go back to that example again, that, that $3 million. Uh, let's say that we would negotiate that, uh, you know, the, the, the minimum after we get our, the debt gets paid off, our $3 million gets paid off. And then the minimum after that is, um, you know, is a 1.7 equity multiple. Now, let's say it takes two years. So now our investors get, you know, their guaranteed 35% annual return out of the deal before even pref equity and LP equity can even get their principal back. That's pretty amazing to have our investors get their returns back before other less risky uh, places in the stack can even get their principal back. And that's what we're negotiating right on right now. Uh, one that one Eddie, I just want to bring this up so that people understand the kind of conditions that are out there. Now, this is a, a little bit of an outlier. This trouble, this asset's in a lot of trouble. Um, yeah. It's less than fifty percent occupied. Economic occupancy is, is maybe half of that. Again, uh, it, it it's a real big turnaround story. It's a real big asset. It, it's in a lot of trouble, and not only, you know, uh, all the you know, the LP and the PREF equity, and now we're down to the primary debt provider. The primary debt provider is even willing to take, you know, right now at least a $10 million haircut to get us in the deal and to get us into, you know, putting our rescue capital in to save this thing because it's drowning. And the lender knows that they're upside down right now as they sit, and they're going to lose a heck of a lot more than 10 million if things keep going the way they're going and somebody doesn't step in. So, that's those are the types of events that are out there. Now that lender can, can get its ten million back again. We'll come in. We'll put our money in and our investors' money. We'll execute. We'll control the asset one hundred and ten percent. We'll execute the plan, and then our principal and our returns come out right first before that lender can get its ten million back. Mm -hmm. That's a really now you're digging into the first position of the stack. That's a really right. safe risk adjusted return um, to negotiate with. And so those are the, those are the opportunities that we're working on right now. We, we wanted to share that with folks so that they can see what we have coming up in our Hampshire Capital Diversified Fund. Yes. And, you know, also, I want to say this, you know, and I had a lot of people that personally knew us and was asking, you know, you, we set the goals at, at $250 million this year. And we've kind of taken a back seat on that. And some of the people that we've seen at the real estate conferences and stuff like that we've been to is like, you know, what's going on? You're not buying anything and everything else. Well, what they didn't see is we were whiteboarding this all out. You know, we were really reading the waters. We were really wading our way through it. And we were coming up with a tactical plan. 
on how to move forward and still create amazing returns for our investors. So although we may have not bought anything yet, we have a closing that's been pushed a few months. But other than that, we have done a really good job of really reading the market, seeing what's out there, so we can provide the best and safest returns for our investors. So I'm really, I guess I would say I'm really proud of us for the amount of education we've done in the market, the amount of things that we've looked into, the partners we've talked to, the debt providers we've talked to, to really feel out this market, to launch at an optimal time for the next six to nine months is going to be a really good opportunity for investors to get back to those pre-COVID 2019 numbers in investor returns. That's right. And, 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 and I would wager um, the argument that it, from a risk adjusted basis, you, you, you get better returns for less risk, given the context exactly. of, the, yeah. of, the, of the construct that I just laid out and how we're looking to structure this rec yep. rescue capital. Uh, it really is kind of the best of both worlds. And, you know, it, I think it's important to note, too, that there's plenty of capital that's out there that, you know, would probably come right out and say, hey, look, you know, you know, too bad. That's business. That's life. I'm sorry for those other LP investors that are behind us. I'm sorry for that other pref equity. And, you know, that's just the cost of doing business. And those folks are going to lose. We're saying the opposite. We're saying, you know what? Those aren't our investors and they're not uh, our firm's. But we still want to be the white knights to come in and help them save their money and recoup their money that they would have otherwise lost because we're big picture guys. We're going to be here for a long time. And every single one of those investors, every single one of those uh, equity firms, they're going to remember that we did that. And they're going, to, they're going to very much be keen to do business with us in the future because of that. Right. And, you know, the cool part about us, though, is we're not looking for recognition for that. We're, we're no. doing this to be good people. We're doing this to prove that we have a, 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 a really good, um, kind heart for this. And it really means a lot to us. We're very passionate about what we do. Mm -hmm. And we are extremely passionate about our communities that we create, our investor network, mm -hmm. and the things that we do to give back to others. And, you know, being able to turn an asset around like this that essentially is completely crapped out and investors that probably have totally lost hope. It really makes us feel good to be able to do something like this. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. And again, we're, we're, um, you know, we're hopefully establishing the relationships and the future too, where people say, Hey, you know, gosh, back in 23, you know, Shane and Eddie stepped in, Hampshire Capital stepped in, and you know, I thought my my investment was was at serious risk uh, based on the operators that uh, were running the deal. They stepped in, and uh, fast forward a couple years later, I I got all my money back plus some. Right, that's the story that we want to tell and have associated with our name. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, guys, it's been a really really good time on the podcast today. Uh, we've talked about some really good risk adjusted returns that are real world examples. Mm -hmm. And on this, you know, if you, again, please like, and subscribe to the channel, please share with your friends and family and network. And then if there's anything else you guys want us to talk about, please comment below and we'll get back to you. We'll let you know if it's something that we can actually provide a valuable podcast on. That's right. All right, Eddie. Well, thanks. Always great to be with you, buddy. We'll see you on the next one. Absolutely. We'll see you.